Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Q&A with AgriSpray. I'm your host, Taylor Moreland, uh, owner of AgriSpray Drones. With me, as always, is Ryan Watson, one of our product knowledge specialists, uh, here to help answer some questions in the chat live while we are talking to Charlie Booker, the chief instigator at AgriSpray Drones. Is that, isn't that your title, Charlie? That or, or uh, stuff stir. <laughs> Stop, sir. You're keeping this pot, this this webinar PG tonight. Exactly. <laughs> well, at least I, you, I, I'll be lucky to make it without saying it, but uh, I can start off PG. <laughs> oh, don't worry. Uh, Micaiah will bleep it out. Um, so anything goes tonight, Charlie. It's just It's just more work down the line. More work down the line. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> All right. Uh, so tonight we are talking about regulations. Now, what kind of regulations? We're talking about FAA regulations largely. Uh, we deal in airspace, federal airspace with these drones. They fly. They're not tractors. So they fly in federal airspace, meaning that there are things you have to know. There are things you have to do. Um, and there are, well, for lack of a better term, kind of a foreign language you have to learn uh, before you are able to operate legally with these drones. And because that is a foreign language, um, we don't feel like you should have to learn the entire language, just the uh, just the key points, the high notes to operate legally uh, and a fast track to do that. And that is, that is what Charlie does here at AgriSpray Drones on top of being the, uh, the chief instigator and the uh, the the what the what what was it, Charlie? Stuff stir, stuff, stuff He hasn't <laughs> slipped yet. The stuff stir um, here at Agri Spray Drones. Uh, he is our regulations uh, compliance manager. Uh, helps our customers, our dealers, um, our network um, of drone pilots get legal, stay legal, and answer questions. Uh, so anyways, let's go ahead and get started with this. Charlie, I guess, could you start off with kind of give everybody your your background, professionally speaking here. Let's keep it professional now. Professionally speaking, <laughs> what uh, what what, if, what did you do before Agri Spray Drones? Well, I, I guess right now I'm the resident old guy. Uh, <laughs> the, I've got a little gray hair. Uh, I, re I retired from a previous life. Uh, two years ago, uh, joined AgriSpray a year ago. So the previous life that Taylor talks about is I was a corporate pilot. So 35 years of flying for uh, private companies, public companies, Fortune 100 companies. Uh, great, great career. Got to see a lot of things, got to do a lot of things. Uh, spent a, a, a term at a small soft drink company out of Atlanta <laughs> that most people might know uh, tends to have me walk around with a red can in my hand all the time. Uh, but great career. Grew up in Missouri, decided after I retired, after 35 years of flying and 13,000 hours in the air, that uh, it was time to go back to the Midwest and be close to some family that was aging around us. And my wife and I are both from the mid-Missouri area. So we came back uh, by happenstance stumbled upon Taylor and a job posting and and we got to talking and and my background in aviation with with 10 years as an FA pilot examiner and a lot of compliance and regulatory work in my background uh Taylor said let's let's get together and see what we can do to help help our customers uh be more knowledgeable and be uh more at ease as they go through the process. So I think that's really what what brought us together just over a year ago to be able to assist uh, in trying to make something that is fairly confusing to to somebody who doesn't work in it every day, be able to get through the process to to have a drone operation that uh, is is legal and understandable and have somebody on staff that's available at all times pretty much to answer the phone and say 
this is what the rule says, or this is how you can comply with that rule. Uh, and that's, that's how I got here. So, uh, we, we looked at it from an internal standpoint and an external standpoint as I came on board and we've had a great time, uh, building what the process is and, and how it is. And as of, uh, 30 days ago, we brought, uh, the majority of the regulations all the way through exemption writing in house. So, uh, it's been a fun year for sure. I mean, the the growth at AgriSpray has been great. The customer base is great, and we continue to make it bigger every day. So, uh, you know, that's what this podcast is about for you all to see what we can do to keep you educated and and uh, be be available for assistance in the future as well. So that's a little bit about me. I'm you know one daughter who's 26 that still lives in the Atlanta area. Uh, so my wife and I are kind of. Uh, I, I won't say retired in place because I'm working pretty hard with this, but this is uh, a fun new world. Uh, I've been flying models for since the early 80s. So from an FAA drone definition of a drone pilot, I've been a drone pilot for a long time, a 107 pilot since it first came out and uh, followed those rules for forever. So it's been a great fit, but I can't say that uh, I knew it all and I've learned a lot in the last year. Uh, but you know, when, when you all call in and say, these rules don't make any sense to me, I'm just a farmer. I, I kind of can go the same way back. I know a lot about the rules, but I don't know a lot about farming. So you're my farming expert and I'm your rule expert. So together we all get together and, and make it so we can make more robust, uh, spray operations out there. So, you know, I applaud everybody for doing what they do and I'm here to help. Some and flying models is that like Miss America or uh, is that you fly models? That's it. That, that's what I did. Yeah, that's what I did when I worked for the the small soft drink company. <laughs> I flew models. No, uh, basically as as my hobby, and they say you never should have your hobby be the same thing as your day job. But uh, you know, I've got uh, quite a few uh, model airplanes that go anywhere from you know a, a half a pound model to a fifty five pound. Uh, half scale airplane. So, uh, we, we like the toys. <laughs> he, he 3d prints little, uh, um, what, mo what do you call a model or, or breakaway? You have probably have them on your desk. Not probably not there to like 3d printed engines of airplanes. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I've got the one at work, but yeah. Yeah. Um, no, it's, um, you know, it's death and destruction. I think there's something behind me that might be broken, but there you uh, go. <laughs> I, you know, you, you got to have toys. You got to have something as a distraction. Yeah, you bet. Well, especially when you got such a boring job like you do. <laughs> it, isn't it fun to be passionate about something that nobody loves? <laughs> you know, uh, right. And that's, you know, that's why we're here. We get to have somebody that, that will, that will read, read that as a rule, not as, well, that's not how I read it. Well, that's how the, the government reads it. So yeah. that's, that's what I'm, I'm in the interpreter. And for you guys listening to this right now, so you, you heard Charlie's background um, and he's, you know, basically a, uh, an, an FAA and a, and a aerospace uh, nerd and, and with a very long resume um, when he came to me and Charlie, what, what was the job posting that, that you read? Tech. Yeah, tech, drone, drone, drone tech. Yeah, yeah, uh, wrenching on drones. Yes, <laughs> For, yeah, wrenching on drones. So he 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 came in and uh, he said, "Yeah, I saw a, a, a resume or a, a job description for a drone tech online." I said, "Okay," and I was like, I "Always wanted a retired guy to to hang out with." <laughs> he, then he handed me his resume, and I'm like, "Pretty sure you'd be my boss right now." <laughs> or uh, or you could find everything that we're doing wrong. <laughs> yeah, so I've tried not to be too mean about that. <laughs> it's it's maybe we should do this differently, not that we're doing it wrong, but uh I, I think that's pretty much what you said is let's, you know, look at it from a perspective of of how we're doing it and then how our customers should do it. So I, I think that watching and and observing how you do it has helped me be able to be able to present it that much better to our customers. So, you know, it, well, that's I, what I was, was thinking back back then as well. Is you know we, you know, you, that this 
this business of, of spray drones is so segmented. You know, we have we have the actual you know problem we're trying to solve, which is we just got to apply the product correctly on on the right area on target efficiently and effectively, right? And then we have the technology itself. You know how to use these drones, how to make them work well. Um, and there's lots of things within that cycle right there. And that, you know, that part there, we understand tremendously uh, here at Agri Spray Drones. I, I understood that very well then. But gosh, it was a regulations piece um, that it it was it was necessary, but nobody understood it. And in Charlie, I think you you've said this a lot. It's like fitting a square peg into a round hole uh, with, with drone regulations. Because I know whenever we started, the process at that point in time was taking about a year or longer to get through if you wanted to be a drone pilot. Um, and it's gotten better, but uh, I know there's still work to be done. Um, but I know whenever my, my experience uh, going through it, we had help, of course, but there was still a lot of things that we had to, you know, we, we were talking to people that they understood drones and regulations, but the ag side of it, understanding the that mentality of the group, the people that we work with, you know, in the ag community, they didn't have that understanding. Um, and so it's hard to get through to the other side. Once we made it, we thought, boy, wouldn't this be great to have somebody who understands, who understands people like, like we do. Yeah. Oh, and it's been blazing the trail the whole time. We're reinventing the wheel. I mean, there, there, there is no uh, experience level here. I mean, we all say experience is what you have now that you needed five minutes ago. Uh, five minutes ago in the drone world uh, was no drones, <laughs> uh, and it, it's really been that short a period of time in history on on why it works that way, and the frustration with forms or regulations that just don't fit. Uh, is is seen at a level every day. I mean, the the thing about agri spray and that they you worked in a, in a time where it was eight to eighteen months to get an exemption. Uh, we tell a customer now that we can probably do it in in six to eight weeks, and they're like, "Oh man, that's forever." And you're like, "It it is forever," but it's you know it, it, if you only had to walk to the mile in our shoes to get to this point, uh, but you know, we have to look at it We at the same time that hopefully a year from now, we're saying that it takes, uh, you know, six weeks or, or it turns the six weeks into six days that now we're just following the rules that we still don't think we will be a year from now. <laughs> uh, we're still going to be operating under exemption. So uh, it is a crazy, crazy, crazy time, crazy industry. And like you said, everybody just wants to go out and do what they know. It's the unknown that makes everybody nervous and the regulations are the unknown. And once you get past getting them all done, it's not hard to comply and stay within it because you want to go out and do what the part that you know. You know. So, well, I guess, you know, we, we probably ought to, you know, get into the meat and potatoes <laughs> of this. <laughs> um, and kind of bring some information to these folks here. So, this is kind of where I think we ought to, we ought to take this um, for the rest of the, our, our time here. So let's maybe, we'll start with describing just in general, what is needed um, from a regulation side of, of the house. If you're looking at um, operating a spray drone, doing commercial application, private application, whatever that may be, but operating a, a spray drone, uh, spraying fields with pesticide, what do you need? Um, and then we'll kind of look at, what you do um, a, in a bit more granular detail um, as far as the interactions that, that you have and kind of the process um, to get folks through that. Um, and then what they have to do on their own side of it and how that works best. You know, if you're gonna, if you're gonna do this, how to do it best. Um, okay. So I think that's, that's what we'll do. And so as we go through this guys, uh, listening live here with us, if you have questions, which undoubtedly you will, uh, please pop those in the Q&A at the bottom of your screen. We'll get to your questions at the very end uh, of, of our time here. So, Charlie, if I'm, a, if I'm a new pilot, what do I need to do? What What are the things I need to have to operate legally? 
and this is where the the number dartboard begins. Uh, <laughs> so the the key to what Taylor just said is that you're going to start a commercial drone operation. So commercial has a big piece of that. To operate a drone commercially, you need a 107 license. So first number I'll throw out is, is 107. Uh, it's technically a remote pilot's license, but it's a commercial drone license. And it's authorization for you. It's, it's you being tested to uh, have the ability to fly a drone commercially. So the 107 test is a 60 question FA written test. You have to do it at a testing center. Uh, you have to get at least a 70% on it to pass that test, but it's no practical experience. It's just uh, the ability to pass the 60 question test. And that allows you to operate a drone commercially. FAR 107, which is what everybody calls the 107 pilot's license, FAR 107 uh, regulates drones between 0.55 pounds and 55 pounds. So more numbers, <laughs> lots of numbers will get thrown out in the, in the next hour or so. Uh, but that's what the li the license allows you to do. So a 107 license is required to do a commercial operations, but the 107 license only goes up to 55 pounds. So the next thing that falls in is how do I operate a drone? A T-40 weighs 222 pounds, uh, fully loaded. And that's what they go off of is, is gross weight, gross takeoff weight. So how do I operate a drone that weighs more than 55 pounds? I need a 44807, more numbers, which is the the regulations.gov uh, order number for the ability to operate a drone that weighs more than than 55 pounds or 55 pounds or greater. Uh, so you have to apply through regulations.gov to uh, to operate a drone that weighs more than 55 pounds. And to oversimplify it, basically you're telling the FAA that, that you want to be waived from certain rules because you're not going to meet the 107 requirements. So it puts you into an aircraft category instead of a drone category. And then there's a lot of rules. There's about 30 rules that you're going to be exempt or, um, or waived that you don't have to comply with so you can operate that drone. So that process you go through, that gives you some conditions and limitations with that exemption, and that's where a medical certificate comes in. So now you have to have a pilot's license. Now, you, now you're in the requirement of a medical certificate. Your exemption is going to say uh, the current exemption right now states a third class FAA medical, so it's a pilot's medical. Uh, it's good for five years if you're over under forty, two years if you're over 40. So it's a medical certificate that's ongoing and you have to have that to fly. It's not anywhere in a regulation. It's in the exemption that you're required to have a medical. Uh, there's other th other conditions and limitations along with that exemption. But so uh, 107 license to fly the drone, exemption to operate a drone more than 55 pounds. And now you would like to, and I'm going to use FAA speak, <laughs> you're going to dispense economic poisons from the air <laughs> that requires a 137 operating certificate uh so the exemptions heavyweight the 107's pilot's license the 137 is the ability to dispense chemicals from the air uh they've really streamlined that process uh now at the completion of uh, your exemption and having a registered drone and a pilot's license you can apply for a 137 certificate and they issue that based on the application. So it's now a, a quick five day process, typically about five to 10 days to get a 137 process uh, processed. So that's quick and dirty. The, the drone itself needs to be registered, which is like a license plate. It needs to have a uh, an end number, just like an airplane. Uh, a drone that weighs less than 55 pounds has to be registered as well, but it's a different process. So the the quote I heard last week at the drone sprayer conference was, if you registered your drone and it was easy, you did it wrong. Uh, we, we laugh at that because we've all done it. 
Uh, you go to FA Drone Zone, you can register a drone in five minutes. You get a, a number that starts with an F. It's it's how you register a drone that weighs less than 55 pounds. A drone that weighs more than 55 pounds is registered with an N as its, as its first letter and its registration. And it, it can be as quick as 10 days, but it takes usually approximately 15 days, 15 to 20 days without mistakes. If there's mistakes in the paperwork, uh, it can go on until you get your mistakes cleared out. It's like going to the DMV. You stand in line for a long time and, and wait. You finally get up there and the nice lady looks at you and says, I need one more piece of paper. Do you have it? And you have to say, no, I'm going to go home and get that. It's That's kind of like registering your drone. So uh, it's a $5 process. It's cheap to get through, but uh, it, it's, it's painful if you've never been through the process. Uh, it's, you know, one of those things that, I've done a bunch of, so it's it's fun. Uh, I can't say that anybody doing one thinks it's fun. So uh, interesting at, at that fact. So that gets you through you as the pilot uh, to be able to fly the drone and the drone being registered and the uh, ability to fly an overweight drone and dispense chemicals, except when you get to the state level. And then when you get to the state level, now you need a state pesticide license commercial uh, depending on what state you're in, you might need aero, you might not. And then depending on what you're planning to do uh, uh, chemical wise or terrain wise, you know, there's forestry, there's aquatics, there's agriculture. So the the different state requirements are all just a little bit different. Some states have apprenticeships required. Some states have uh, sign off requirements uh, it's, it's really worth it to find out what your state requirements are. Uh, the nice thing about AgriSpray is we've got dealer networks throughout the country. Uh, we've got a lot of different avenues to be able to help you with state requirements. So uh, interesting times from that aspect, because we get calls all the time saying, you know, well, what do I need to do in Idaho? And it's like, I, I don't, I'm, I'm pretty good with my memory, but I don't have 50 states worth of uh, data. I can help look it up for you. I can get you to a dealer in in that state or somebody that's on a, an adjoining state that probably have some re reciprocity that knows more about it than we do. But uh, I, I think from a general overview that gets us through most pieces of the regulations in a, in a quick and dirty overview. The whole process takes about six to 10 weeks. Uh, I've seen it done in, in 40 days in the last uh, two months. Uh, I've seen it go on still for over a year <laughs> uh, with somebody ongoing right now. So it just really depends on, on you know, all the pieces of the puzzle. And sometimes it's things like medicals that are holding you up or it's state pesticide, something, you know, here or there. But uh, typically right now, I'm still going to tell people that you can get through and in 60 to 90 days pretty easily. Yeah. You know, what's amazing about all of that, Charlie, is we actually gained one attendee during that, <laughs> that speech. We didn't lose you anybody. Have, <laughs> you would have bet money, you would have lost somebody on that one. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is the classroom when everybody falls asleep. This is just after dinner. We're gonna talk regulations and everybody goes, oh, you know. Uh, you know, before they go to sleep, do we say, you know, th that's why we offer this service so that we can do as much of this for you as possible and yeah. and get it to where mostly you're just signing forms and 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 working through it that way. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, and I think that that's important to, to say here is, you know, you 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 gave the brief version, a very brief version, Charlie, um, you gave the brief version of what you have to have. Um, you know, from a regulation standpoint, and it's, it's a lot of numbers and it sounds complicated. Um, it sounds like it's going to cost a lot of your time um, and your money. And it sounds like you're, it's going to cause possibly divorce. Um, you know, it's just, it's a lot, it's a lot, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, to, to, to think about, you know, whenever you also have to think about how do I fly this drone? How do I, uh, set up my trailer? How do I get business? You know, how do I start offering my services? You know, and then you throw on regulations like, oh, great. Now I got this too. Um, so it does sound, you know, it seems very, very daunting. So 
Uh, but thank you for laying that out um, very streamlined and, and simplified as, as we can. And this is, you know, what we do at Agri Spray Drones is try to make sure we educate everybody um, that you you know what what you have to do, what you're supposed to do. So on the flip side of that, Charlie, all right, I'm I want to start a new a new business uh, spraying with drones. I find a a lovely Agri Spray Drones dealer, um, and I I purchase a drone. Um, I ask about regulations. I ask what to do. What happens from that point? Um, what what do you do? What do we do? And how's that process work from the customer's perspective? What should I start doing first? Um, I, I get people at, at the phone call level even prior to purchasing the drone because they, you know, what's it going to take for the regulations? And these turn into 45 minute phone calls that are similar to what I just said. And yes, it's oversimplified. And part of it is to put a realistic overview on it. Uh, the if you purchase it with the drone it's it's you're going to end up at some point either with a dealer or a salesperson that's going to transfer the person to me and then it's like what do i need to do next uh there's two ways to to do our regulations package and one's with a drone purchase and the other one is just to buy the regulations package so you can do that ahead of the drone purchase if you bought a drone somewhere else and you just need the regulations package, we can sell just the regulations package by itself. Uh, so the, the process can be started, you know, at, at, any, at any, any stage of that game, you can start the exemption process without a drone. Uh, if you just purchase the drone, then the exemption process is really the first stage of the regulations package to, to get that timer going on the, on the six weeks that it's going to take for regulations.gov to process the application for the exemption and to get it back to you. Uh, so we collect, we collect the data to, to what you're doing it under the company name. You know, it needs to be a consistent, uh, whether you're going to do it as an individual or a company, or uh, you're going to create an LLC or a, a S corp or however you want to set your business up. That's personally up to you. Uh, you know, we do, we do them individual names. We do them under company names. We just want to be consistent from start to finish with that process. So a lot of times we'll do a little bit of legwork in the beginning to make sure that the company names, how you want it, or the, the whole setup is how you want it because changing things throughout the process slows the process down. Uh, so it's not like halfway through, you can say, Oh, timeout. I want to go from an individual to a company. You can, it's just now it's a, that it starts your refile to get your exemption and your top, your clock's running longer. Uh, so we try to do just a little bit of legwork in the beginning to gather the right information. We, we, we start that exemption process as we verify that your exemption has been filed. We, we start with paperwork to help you register your drone. So we do as much pre pre filled out information on the, on the registration forms as we can. It's still going to need your company name. It's going to need, uh, you know, how you're, if it's an LLC, the FA wants to know how the LLCs are set up. Uh, since September, we've needed to register via the remote ID serial number, which we get out of the drone once it's been activated. So there's some some legwork that the customer has to do to to do that. So we, we feed you the documents and then we're available, regulations department's available to answer your questions, help you through the forms, uh, review your forms. Uh, to get your registration going because the registration and the exemption are the two things that can take the longest. Uh, so we want to get those going early. Uh, that's the time when after you get those paperwork in and turned in, uh, then you make sure you get your 107 done. Great time to study for that. Great time to study for uh, uh, state pesticide. Get those things in order as your exemption comes back. Uh, and your registration comes back, then we can file for your 137. So uh, we, at that point, when your exemption comes back, we give you the steps for now going on to the next step and how to fill that form out, get that form in. And so we're kind of walking you through each form. You know, you, you can fill out the forms to best of your ability and send it to the FAA and hope you got it right. And it might take three to four weeks for them to return it to you. Uh, we're available to, uh, proof and, and help you edit your forms so that, you know, you can send a, a set of documents to me. It might take me a day or a day and a half to get to them. 
Uh, but that's not a three week turnaround. That's, you know, 36 hours is much better to say, edit this, edit this, and and we'll get you through. So that's part of the service is that ability to uh, edit and help you eliminate some of the, the slowdown errors. Uh, at the time your exemptions granted is when we issue your manuals. Uh, in the overview, we didn't really talk about manuals, but your exemption requires you to have training manual, safety manual, operations manual. Uh, at AgriSpray, we, we create a, a set of manuals for you that work as a template that you need to complete to make it in your manuals for your operation. They meet the requirements of the exemption, but they're not uh, completely finished as far as you, you add your uh, exemption to it, you add your registration, your pilot's license, uh, your medical certificate, copies of all that on there so that you have one document you you can you can reference for your operation and if somebody audits your operation that you can say here, here's everything you need. Part of your training requirements is that you do self-testing. In the days prior, we the FAA used to come and test and they would do a test. Now the requirement is that you self-test. So part of our manuals is also to administer that self-test so I put a spot in there for you to put your test results. So there's things that you have to complete as you go through it. But by the time your exemption comes back or your 137 comes back, you should have met all the requirements from at the federal level to go on and start operating uh, with a full set of manuals that that give you give you a, something to go by as far as training, safety. Uh, just general operations that that meet the requirements of 107 and 137 and all the requirements in the exemption. Uh, so it's it's kind of a full service thing. And as 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 your business changes, if if addresses change, if company names change, uh, drone equipment changes, uh, the exemptions are only good for two years. So every two years, you've got to reapply for the exemption until we finally get a rule. Uh, that's in place where we don't have exemptions, you'll have to renew these exemptions. So uh, something to think about for the season, people on this call, a lot of people did these exemptions in 2022. They're good for two years. It's 2024. It's time to renew. Uh, something that a lot of people aren't thinking about, but uh, you know, those are things that hopefully in the future we get better at tracking as well for our customers by bringing, bringing it in-house on when, when you received it and, and what you have. So uh that that's a quick and dirty of of a, a lot you know welcome to regulations i'm going to talk too much about a simple question <laughs> charlie that's not just regulations that's just everything about about charlie <laughs> about me sorry <laughs> well, talk, talking too much about a simple question i think that's uh that, that can describe a lot about you <laughs> 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 but being thorough is a good thing, I think, in this in this business for sure. Uh, okay, so just to reiterate, i i buy the I buy a drone. I want to press the easy button on on the regulation side. I buy the regulations package. Uh, I am responsible for getting my one hundred and seven, taking that test, going online to let's just say Pilot Institute, um, studying there, and then going in and taking the test. I am responsible for getting my medical uh, and passing that, going to a doctor, uh, cough, cough, and passing, and then getting my insurance lined up and getting my state uh, pesticide. That's what I'm responsible for. And AgriSpray or Charlie Booker uh, is responsible for Basically, the 137, 4407, and helping with the in number, um, kind of the house. That that is that is what what you're doing uh, for me. We are acting on your behalf to help you with all of those pieces of paper. The, most of them will go back will go back to you as the customer for signatures, uh, or they will be you know partially filled out and you will finish them. Uh, so there's, you know, there's still a notary section, a piece that has to get notarized, uh, for the affidavit of ownership and, and then all the documents are being signed. So we, we can't do it all for you, but, uh, 
we're getting closer, you know, in the digital world, it won't be long before we can just send you documents and say, please digitally sign here. Yeah. Uh, and that's, that's our goal is to, by bringing this in house is to be able to have a little bit more quality control on the timelines and, and those kind of things that can, can be assisted by uh, pushing documents to the customer instead of saying, here's the document, the next document we need and waiting for, for it to be filled out. So. And if I have a, you know, I, so I, I have to send in some of the forms now you're, you'd help me with some of these forms. I'd put in my information, then I would send those to the FAA. And if I am nervous about sending some, something to the FAA, I send that to, to you and you yep. proofread it. Let me know I'm good to go, then pass it on. Yep. Correct. And we, we've gone as far as even to pre-write a, a file letter for your FAA file, where it's just really fill in the blank of your company information and your drone serial number. Uh, and it, I mean, literally that, that, that file letter or that letterhead that goes with your regulations package or with your re registration package to the FAA has the, the address where it gets mailed to the, all the contents of that letter, which means everything that goes, including a, a $5 check made out to the federal aviation administration. I mean, we've, we've tried to make it, we've tried to make a, a process that's not as easy as possible at least into a manageable uh, set of uh, documents that guide you through it all the way to just follow the the file letter that will get you to the end. Uh, right. And at any time, if you have questions, I mean, my, you know, the, the, the perfect call is a guy who's got all his, he says, I got all my documents. Let me just go over them all with you. And we spend 20 minutes going over the, the, the four documents to register a drone and just go line by line. It's, you know, I, I, that probably makes people drop off the call that I'm willing to sit and listen to how many people a day go through their files. But that's that makes it easier for people because dealing with the FA is not something that everybody looks forward to on a daily basis. And it's like I can look at that document and know what they're going to take or not not like and say, let's let's reword that or let's change it to this and it'll go right through. So. So just so I heard you right. If I have questions with any part of this process, 137, 407, in number. Medical. I, medical. I I call AgriSpray. I get Charlie. And you explain it. Yep. Click on the regulations tab. Uh, that gets you to my email address. Call AgriSpray on the 5000 number and go to the regulations prompt. That gets to me. Uh any of those things will get it started. I I don't mind sharing my contact information to anybody because whether it's phone number, email, whatever works better for you. Uh, I'm a, a guy who's been married 34 years and is halfway retired. And everybody, our customers work from about six in the morning till about midnight, uh, East coast time through, through Pacific time. So my phone will usually start ringing about, six in the morning and go till eight, nine o'clock at night. And I do my best to answer when I can. Uh, I spend enough time on the phone that if I'm not answering, I'm probably talking to somebody. Uh, if you haven't figured it out yet, I do talk too much. <laughs> uh, but that's that's what we're here for. So yes, the, the phone is a big deal. I think that helps a lot of people feel that they can get through this process. It talks them uh, off the ledge, that's for sure. That's my experience is... I was close to that ledge at one point in time. <laughs> and, uh, having somebody to talk to would have helped me a lot. Yeah. Great. And uh, you don't know how many times somebody calls just to ask a simple question about, okay, how do I get started? And it really turns out that they've been worried about this for a long time. And just by knowing that there's somebody there that a phone a friend that they're like, okay, let's get going. So if, if, the, if that's the thing you're worried about is the regulation side, just know that you've got somebody that you can get a hold of and get your questions answered. And, and, you know, I, I I'm here to help. Uh, am I a lawyer? No. Am I trying to be a lawyer? No. Uh, do I have experience dealing with the FAA, whether it's at the, at the local office level, at the national level, at registration, uh, 
you know, I've done my best even in the last year to get to know the local FA people at the UAS level, uh, because those are the people that when you ask me a question that I don't know, that I'm going to reach out to, to get that answer. Uh, I'm not afraid to tell you, I don't know the answer. Uh, you know, that's something that we teach pilots in the beginning. You know, it's, it's not a bad thing to say, I don't know, but you need to know where to look it up. And that's, that's what you'll find for me is that I'm going to find a way to know the answer. I'll get back to you. Perfect. Well, that's, that's, I mean, I guess if you take one thing away, I guess that's, that's what you take away is that's, that is why Charlie is here. That, that is why Acre Spray Drones does in-house regulations because it is a complicated process. It is a process that uh, makes you want to pull your hair out. And if you, if you only had that one person that you could ask, uh, it would help. And that's what Charlie is. He's that one person you can ask. Um, and not only that, but um, we have a, a set of manuals that we think is really, really good and easy to read and legible. And it's not like a foreign language. And so you can understand them. And so that's why we do your regulations now in-house here at Dagger Spray Drones. So Charlie, thank you very much for outlining all of that. Um, on that process alone, with the regulation services that we offer, is there anything else that we missed? I'm sure there is. <laughs> uh, Call Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. You know that, and that the the big thing there is if we missed it today, it could be that it's new tomorrow. Uh, the the regulations have have not the regulations by definition have not changed at all in the past two years. Uh, 107 has not been rewritten. 137 has not been rewritten. The guidance changed last summer uh, to really streamline the process, but no rule change. So everybody says, oh, the big rule changed last summer. Nothing changed. It was, it's the same rules. It's the way the, the FAA is, is their guidance for issuing everything changed. Uh, but that doesn't mean tomorrow though, that something else doesn't change. Uh, that's where between our newsletters or these podcasts, to be able to put that information out to you all. Uh, I, I can tell you that this week, something changed in the FA medical world because I've had seven customers call and say, I'm at the doctor's office and he's now telling me I have to have a second class medical. So for, for the first six months I worked here and probably for the year before that, every time a pilot went to a, a doctor's office and asked for a medical, the doctor said, you don't need a medical to fly a drone and even told people to leave. He wouldn't give it to them. Uh, and we said, no, we need a second class because that's what it was. Well, the guidance changed in the, in the, uh, in the exemption last summer to say you need a third. And we got it out there pretty good that it changed. And all our customers went out and asked for third classes and really didn't get much pushback even then. And something's changed this week in, in, in Cami, which is, Oklahoma City Civil Aviation Medical Institute, they must have put a newsletter out that said, you might see people needing a second class medical for a drone. So, uh, you know, it's, we'll say it loud and proud right now, you need a third class per the exemption. If your doctor says he, you need a second, you don't, uh, he's going to charge you more for a second, but a, a second class medical can still be used for third class privileges. So you're okay with a second. So don't be discouraged. If your doctor talked you into a second, you just paid a little more for a glorified third, but it's kind of things like that. And that's where the newsletter or these podcasts make a big difference to be able to get the word out and, and let people know. Yeah. And, and in large part, you know, I think you feel the same way, Charlie. I think the FAA is, has been supporting um, this industry and has been supporting these drones, especially lately, you know, with, you know, speeding up the process um, and looking at, you know, how do we, how do we simplify this in the future? Right. And, you know, more, more recently here, um, you know, there are some potential changes with swarming. I know that's, that's a big question people are asking swarming and night operations. Everybody wants to fly 55 drones in the middle of the night, you know, with, with nobody there and all that kind of, all this crazy stuff, you know, um, so, you know, but but it looks like the FA is coming around to opening some of these up on the ag drone side. What's your take on this? Um, what can people expect for swarming and night operations and visual observers? Um, 
And uh, I guess, yeah, which a, a brief five minute take on this. Look, he, now he's trying to he's trying to censor me. Yeah, yeah. Big news last week. Uh, last week, the list of approved drones was updated. So now there's 67 drones on the list of approved drones. I, you can fact check me on that one. I, I did quick math. Uh, so that was a change we saw last week. And a uh, a drone manufacturer uh, got approval last week or an exemption was approved for, uh, an exemption request was approved last week for swarming up to three drones at night without a visual observer. Uh, so the the quick and dirty centered ov overview of that is uh, just that. So don't read into it that one person can fly three drones at night unrestricted without anything. There's more to it the way it was written, uh, but that's, that's precedence approval right there, which means there now we now have an operator that is approved by blanket authority for just their operation uh, to fly at night, which means they could just be operating normally at night. They could be operating normally during the day without a VO. Uh, they can be operating a drone, uh, operating three drones at once with a VO, without a VO at night. But we we thought, and the way the industry was poised was that all of three of those requests would come separately and that we would be able to sell or apply those exemptions one at a time. So if you just wanted uh, the ability to fly at night, you'd be able to apply for night. Well, the precedence was put out there for all three at once. And that is how the precedence will need to be to move forward to operate on if to ask for those approvals based on what precedence is out there. So that that's big news for our industry. So if you want to operate at night, you have the ability, the exemption that we're going to be able to get will be for all three. So there's a combination of what works for you and your organization, but it gives you so much more flexibility than we had a week ago. Uh, really it gave one person the, the flexibility right now. Uh, all of us are scrambling in corners, writing new safety cases and justification based on that precedence to be able to say they got it so do we this is our safety case on why we think we should have it as well uh so yes it's available do i have a timeline on when we will have one approved uh we hope to apply for them very soon uh we will you will start to see this show up on our website and in our blog posts uh about how you can purchase it and what the timeline is on what we think. We think it'll turn into a another 60 day exemption process based on precedence. It's just got to make sure that the wording's right. So uh, we've seen it at, at, at uh, that's how it's worked in the past. So that's how this one's going to work. Uh, so yes, it's, it's out there and we'll see it quickly to where it's an available uh, purchase option for us. And it will become the new standard, I think, as what everybody wants is their exemption. I mean, you can, right now you can apply for a standard 44807 AG 137, or now the, the, when this one, when, when I get this one written, we'll have the option for the multiple, meaning up to three drones at once uh, with the ability to fly without a VO and the ability to fly at night. So, uh, so if somebody, by somebody, I mean literally everybody, uh, wants to operate three drones, what what do we do now, right now, um, or what should we be looking for in the very near future? If if we want to, if I want to operate three drones, what do I need to do? How do I? How do I? Yeah, I guess what 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 do I need to do to operate three drones, Charlie? The current the current forty four eight zero seven exemption that's out there right now to operate three drones means that you need three PICs. Uh, depends on how your manual is worded for for your visual observer. Uh, the exemption says that you need a visual observer. Most manuals that were written said you need a visual observer for each drone. So uh, it depends on how your manual is written and everything else. You basically need three PICs and up to three VOs. Uh, 
what this could open up for you is the ability to now do this either with three PICs and no VO or one PIC and three drones and even no VO. Uh, there, there is some guidance that's in this exemption on what duties people can be doing while they're the PIC and drones are out working. If you have three drones working in a field, it does say that the, the PIC can only be monitoring those drones. And if you need to service it, something either on the on the ground or on the drone that all three drones must be on the ground so uh you can't be operating two drones in the field with one drone on the trailer with one person and be mixing chemical and filling that third drone up while the other two are flying that's the way it's written so yeah. it's it's not just going to be open blanket to do whatever there's still in in the current exemption there's 33 conditions and limitations in the new exemption there's 46 conditions and limitations so it's a little more limited to what you how you operate uh or it's just it's not limited it's maybe a little more restrictive but uh it can it can you know it opens night up exact perfectly uh it opens the ability to operate without a vo perfectly it's kind of cloudy on some of the swarming things but every drone swarms a little different as far as what the manufacturer does so it, but it does open it up to all the drones on the list of approved drones. Okay. And if if I want to apply for this new exemption, um, are you going to be able to help me do so? Uh, and if so, when and how do I find out? I'm hoping to have something drafted within the next week to 10 days. Uh if you can't, if most of you don't know me, so you don't know that I sound sick. I went to the drone users conference in Alabama and had the flu after I got home and I've been kind of flat out for a couple of days. So I, I hope to be, I was hoping to have a whole lot more information at this call. Uh, but yes, we're working on pricing. We're working on a timeline. The thing that I don't want to do right now is hold people up to the point of putting all their eggs in that basket for this spray season. Uh, we don't know that it's going to be a 60 day process. Uh, we know that it's similar and it's based on precedents that should go through in, in a fairly quick thing. The thing that I don't want to do is put 200 people up against this one, just to find out that what we've drafted and worded is not, not working and, and backlog a bunch of people for a long time. Uh, but that I'm not, at the same time pushing you away either so we're going to do it we're going to get one in quick uh we're going to put a, a test group through to to see that we get approval and uh and then we'll know with the better greater greater uh, uh percentage of of passing you know it is a, a non-exact science we are saying we want exactly what the last guy went for for our own reasons is how we're doing it. I can't use their wording. They're, they were using di different equipment and and it's really our justification on why we need it, not that we want it because they have it. So uh, fair enough. Quick. So I guess it's safe to say if, if I'm an if I'm a new pilot um, with a the drone, I don't have any any exemptions at all, any regulations at all. It's safe to say I should probably just go ahead and get my just a regular 4407, 137, regular one drone kind of a thing. Get that, lock it in basically, and then, then I can apply for this this multiple drone thing. Correct. Okay. Correct. Great. And the my biggest, if, if this was October, I might tell you something different. But fungicide, we're starting to smell fungicide already. <laughs> uh it's we're getting close so i'd I'd hate to see somebody not be able to start uh you know a, a, a good business going right when they need to be out there because they're they're waiting on this uh we've been waiting on this one for a while we want to make sure we got it right as we go and uh make sure that we've got a good product out there manuals have to be written that go along with this so you know, our, our manuals all say that you can't operate at night right now. <laughs> uh, it, it doesn't sound like much, but you know, we've got, we've got a hundred and uh, 115 exemptions in process right now. Uh, because it's that time of the year where everybody's like, Ooh, I need to get going. Uh, so we're writing regular manuals at the same time. We're about to do all this to change, uh, for this. So, uh, 
yeah, we're, we're going to be ready. Uh, it's not a process that's just going to flip a switch and go, oh, everything changed last Tuesday, so we're ready to go. Uh, sorry, I'm a one-man show. <laughs> you bet. Uh, All right. Charlie. I don't know that there's another solution out there yet either. I mean, yeah. everybody's doing the same thing. We'll, most half of us were at the at the spray user conference last week. So, yeah, yeah, that's that's right. And I, you know, I think there's there are there are those in this industry who've been doing this for for a while um, on the regulation side, and I think there are those in this industry who um, are you know seeing some of the changes coming down the down the pipeline like we are um, and understand what is needed you know to. Uh, for the end user, you know, for for the pilot, for the farmer in the field, um, understand what is needed there. Understand that support is is huge. Understanding these things uh, and understanding the manuals is huge. And so that's what we're trying to do here. And that's what Charlie's trying to do. And um, yeah, um, I, I know a lot of people want swarming, and the people that I've talked to that have been in swarming tests or find out really quick that swarming is a lot of work. Uh, <laughs> In, in a in even even in a T four, I mean, next week, week week after next in Arkansas, they're going to swarm nine T tens in a in a in a test bed. So they're going to have four pilots swarming nine T tens at the same time, uh, in the same field. I, I'm going. I mean, that's that's a show to me. Uh, a T ten is going to come back and land what every three minutes, four minutes, uh, and it's going to need something. So nine t10s trying to land every four minutes with four people trying to maintain that uh the people i know that are swarming are working hard uh same especially area. when especially if you think you're going to do it with with no vo in your first spray season so there's a lot of people on this call that want to do it because they've got a, a season under their belt and know what it takes to you know you put three three t40s landing every every seven minutes that's that's a drone on the ground about every two minutes two. and 45 seconds uh less, with running three that. that's yeah that's that's el elbows and uh other body parts running around trying to keep dang it charlie didn't through. say it <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that, that's 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 busy and yeah. uh you know yeah that, so that's I, I probably think not you, you bring up a good point it's it's you know you see this exemption come through that's you know, one pilot, three drones at night. If you literally did that, it would not end well. Yeah. So you know, there's there's one thing of having, uh, you know, the 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 license, you know, the license to kill, but should you pull the trigger, kind of a thing, you know. Um, yeah. Right. The only thing I'm not going to talk if, you if out they of could, it. they never thought about if they should. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right. Yeah. Well, Charlie, we've been. Um, we do have questions though. So <laughs> I, I saw two that went I saw two that went by that I just want to start with. Uh, yeah, you bet. Go ahead. One was one was uh finding a local doctor. Uh and the, the question was in a certain town, the my standard answer to how to find a doctor to get an FA medical is to call your local airport where they do flight training and ask the local pilots where they get their medical. Uh Finding a doctor through the internet is not how you want to find a family doctor. So I wouldn't recommend just going to the internet to find an FAA doctor. Talk to pilots that are that are doing this for their livelihood. They're gonna they're gonna know a good local small town doctor that's gonna help you get through it. Uh, that's really what you're looking for. You're you know it's there are some AMEs out there that are just about a puppy mill doing medicals. Uh, you'd rather build a relationship with a local doctor uh so so what you're saying so there, Charlie, when you say call your local airport you mean call your small small local airport not like call lax no yeah don't call atlanta hartsfield uh you know call an airport that has a little flight training school and ask the flight training you know the flight instructors or the or the people that answer the phone at the airport if they can recommend a local doctor uh <laughs> you know the little uncontrolled airport down this down the road uh is a great resource for them uh so austin is asking uh, the easiest quickest method to register your drones he's asking mailing the forms or drone zone and charlie you touched on this earlier if you are doing a 55 pound and over drone 
you cannot register it through drone zone uh, you have to at some point in time mail in forms um and get an in number there you go charlie thank you you know, you'll end up with a registration that looks like this when you register through the faa uh i don't know if you can see the in number on this one uh but the fa drone zone looks like this and it says small uas certificate of registration uh and i'm going to be the regulatory guy and, and correct what taylor just said because he said you can't register one of these drones with drone zone you can they'll take your five dollars they'll give you the registration it's just incorrect <laughs> Uh, you know, that's why when somebody calls me and says, you know, I need to work on my exemption, but I've already registered my drone. I'm like, did you do it through drone zone? And they're like, yeah. And you're, you know, if you go back and look at the drone zone screen, it doesn't say it till you scroll down to the bottom of the page that if your drone weighs more than 55 pounds, you have to do it here. Uh, and then it takes you to the paper process for those of you in the know, the FAA does have the CARES program, which is the Civil Aviation Registry something program. Uh, and you can you can apply for paper registration online through that program, but they only accept digital signatures and your affidavit for the UAS uh, purchase has to be notarized. So to do that process all the way through, you need a digital notary uh, I know one, but she's not all the way through the process of getting it done yet. But uh, so you have to mail in the affidavit, which means you'll process through CARES. You'll upload the affidavit into CARES because it won't take it without it. Then the FAA is going to kick your file back because it wasn't an original signature, but you've already mailed the affidavit to them. So you'll get a file back saying your file's bad and then they'll get your affidavit and then they'll finish processing your registration while you're sitting on a letter that says they're not going to. So I don't recommend that you use CARES. Uh, I recommend you do the paper until they figure a, a better way to digitally sign the notary. Like that's a roundabout way to say there is more than one way to register via paper, but. Yeah. <laughs> you bet. So long story short, if you're confused about this, Email email who, Charlie? Registrations at agrospraydrones.com? Registrations at agrospraydrones.com uh, yeah. is the is the best there one. Or C Booker, the letter C Booker, B-O-O-K-E-R at agrospraydrones.com. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll throw it out there. It, they both come to me uh, and that's what it's for. So Sounds good. All right. Okay, um, Chase is asking, uh, you mentioned a couple of times about doing this commercially um, versus doing it yourself. So if, if, I'm, if I'm a farmer and I just want to spray my own fields, nobody else's, do I have to get a 137 and a 407? Just, I just said yes or no, Charlie. Yes. Yes, you do. So if you're a farmer, you have to get a 137 le to legally operate a spray drum. All right. To legally dispense economic poisons from the air. Yes. All right. We're getting into semantics now. Okay. Uh, Peter asks, um, we have to have the in number before they will issue a 137. Uh, I've been going through this step over the last few days. Um, okay. So before they'll show 137, you have to have a drone with the in number, correct? Correct. Correct. At least okay. one. Right. Okay, um, Thomas was asking if an operator already has a 137, um, if if you will offer a discounted rate file just the 45807. Call me. Yes, call Charlie. Yes, yes. I do offer a discounted rate. The the and I and I I hesitate because it's one of a one page form and an email to get a 137 now. So. It's the same amount of work, but we will do an exemption for somebody who already has a 137 for a discounted rate. Yeah, mainly because there'll be less of a headache for you, right? Well, they've already dealt with the FAA, so they're better <laughs> yeah. about registering right. things and, and doing that because they've done. So, yeah, yes, I get it. I know. It's it's that wink, wink, I'm a pilot thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Um, 
Yeah, so here we go. Zachary's asking the difference between registering um, in a business name versus personal name. I think maybe just to clarify here also. Um, so if if you're if you've got let's just say an operation has three drones and three pilots. Each pilot needs a 107, a medical, uh, and potentially their pesticide license, depending on the state. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Um, if they work for a company, charliebookerdrones.com um, services, that company, Charlie Booker Drones, that company has the 137 and 457 exemption, correct? That's the best way to do it, right? Okay. And, but, and uh, go ahead. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. And the 137. Okay, yeah. Um, but an individual can file for 137 and 4407 if they want to have it in their own name, correct? Yes. Okay. And that that individual can be the, the company. I mean, people can work for that individual too. Correct. But in your opinion, it's better yeah. to have it under an LLC? or a S corp or something. I, I look at it. I, I'm the Taylor looks at everything in a positive way. I look at everything in a negative way. I'm going to look at it as what could happen if something goes wrong. Where do you want your liability? Uh, Charlie Booker drone service LLC is can get wiped out. I don't care. Just don't take Charlie Booker with them. Uh, so I'm not going to do anything that doesn't have the umbrella of trying to keep me out of trouble. If, God forbid, who knows what it is. It could be the drone flies off your trailer going up 60 miles an hour down the highway and goes through the windshield of somebody's car. They're going to go after anybody's name they can associated with the operation. So I, I see it a lot where they'll put the drone, the the, the 137 will be in a, a, a LLC or a corporation and the 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 137 and the exemption are both in the corporation, but they thought it was easier to register the drone on the individual's name. Guess who's going to get named in the lawsuit? All, all, everybody. If if they're all in the LLC name, then everything stays under that umbrella. Uh, if the drone's registered to an individual that really owns the company, that just made the, the individual that owns the company now part of the liability string. So, worst case. There you go. Okay, Austin's asking, uh, is the regulation package the same cost for under 55 pounds and over 55 pounds drones? Because essentially, I guess to, to define here for everybody listening, you have to have a 137 no matter what. 137 is spraying pesticide. Drone can be under 55 pounds, only the T10 is, or a drone can be over 55 pounds, and a 447 is also required. So is the regulation package cost the same? It does. It's the same amount of work, whether it's uh, under under underweight drone or overweight drone. And for those who are going to ask that question is, Taylor's exactly right. If it's under 55 pounds, it still needs an exemption to apply for the 137. It's You don't need an exemption to fly it because it's not an over 55 pound drone. You need the exemption to be able to apply for the 137 certificate. You You see it all the time on the forums and everything that if it's un, if it's a T10 which weighs under 55 pounds, you don't need an exemption. You, you're right to fly a T10. You don't need an exemption to put chemicals out of that T10. You do need the exemption to get the 137. Yeah. And so if somebody has a T10 or a small drone, would you just recommend that they can can you file for both? You know, at the same time to get approval for under and over. No, you no. you can. I mean, we, I can work a deal with you to do both at the same time, but it is two separate filings because they are two separate entities. There are different conditions and limitations. The we the under 55 is really not a bad exemption for somebody who's small plot work. It, it doesn't require a VO, it doesn't require a medical and it allows you to fly at night. So up until last week, it was, it was there was a big reason to go under, 10, under 55 pounds. Uh, yeah because it gave you those things. So you can operate a drone that's under 55 pounds on an over 55 pound exemption, but you're now you have to have a medical and, and a VO and, and you can't operate at night. So the, the, the rules have changed a little bit. So they're, they're more similar to each other now with the new one. So once we get the new one going all the time, then 
uh, they'll be a lot more similar. You bet. All right. And Charlie, we have, there's a lot of questions here. Uh, so um, if, if some of these are, are, uh, are going to be a little more complicated, uh, feel free to just say, contact me later. That's all I'll do all the time. It's, uh, it, it saves, it saves us time here for complicated questions. <laughs> and I know you've probably had about a cup and a half of day quill by, by now. So might be running low on steam. Um, <laughs> all right. Okay. The, um, uh, Jonathan is asking here um, if there's going to be any changes to the FA medical requirements. If let's just say somebody has you know, diabetes um, that's you know blocking them from getting their medical, any changes or any ways around this? No, uh, the FA doesn't see a difference. This is back to the square peg in the round hole. Uh, a third class medical with an FA doctor gives it, he can't give you a drone only restriction. So they have to do it based on the fact that they think you're going to get in an airplane and fly it. So with, with diabetes, the FA did change their guidance on, on, on diabetics for about two years ago. So with a third class, it's easier to get a medical. If you're a diabetic, it's not easy. Uh, they have relaxed some of the standards, but there are, there are a certain, you know, if you're a war veteran and you've lost a limb in the war, uh, it's pretty hard to get a medical, but there is no requirement when you look at the medical standards, it says you have to be able to walk into the doctor's office, but they can't look at it. I mean, I've, I've got a guy who's going through this and the local FAA wants to make him go out and prove that he can fly an airplane so that they can issue him a medical to go fly a drone because they don't have anything in their system on how to evaluate him as a drone pilot. They only have it written as a, an airplane pilot. So it, it's very frustrating for some of these things. The FAA has told us more than once in the last six months that they would love to relax this standard. Uh, it didn't come out in this last exemption change. They have told us it is as a, recent as last week that they're still trying to relax medical to be more like uh, physically fit to fly, meaning a driver's license and you didn't take a bunch of codeine like I did. So I can't go fly right now, but that would be, you know, self uh, self evaluating your medical standard before you go fly for the day. We would love to see that. And we push that as an industry and know that at AgriSpray, that's what we do when we go to the commercial UAS conference or the drone sprayers convention. We we sit in front of the FAA and say, these are the things that we would like to push for changes. I mean, you don't have a lot of lobbying on, on your behalf, and that's what we try to do. I appreciate that. Okay. Um, Chase is asking if someone is did not purchase their drone through the AgriSpray Drones network, um, is not an AgriSpray Drones customer, will you still help them with their FAA stuff? So I will help anybody that calls with any question that I can. If we're gonna file an exemption, we charge for the regulations package. We don't have a price based on where you bought your drone. Uh, I can help you with, at this point, any drone that's on the approved list. So. I'm not even too worried when somebody calls me and says, hey, I just bought my drone from my best friend, whoever. I usually will ask them what type of drone it is just so I know, but the exemptions are now written to meet the drones on the approved list. So, uh, you know, what we charge for, we charge whether you're our customer or or, or not. Uh, I think it's like our tech department, when you call and have, have a question, I'm gonna help you get through the paperwork. Uh, even if you're the guy that wants to write your own exemption, I've, I get those phone calls all the time. I'm, you know, 12 months into writing my own exemption. Can you help me? Yeah, I'm going to help you. You know, uh, if we have to work out a price per the hour to help you, I can do that. But for the most part, I don't think we've ever charged anybody by the hour to do anything. Uh, we we have a, a regulations package. If you're going to fit into that, we we get you into it. If 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 it's just tech support, on the regulation side, I'm going to answer the phone and not judge. Uh, and I really try to mean that 
from any aspect of it. You know, I've been, if you call me and say you've been doing this for two years and 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 this is what I need help with from a legality wise, you're not going to get lectures from me on how'd you get to this point without knowing this or how'd you do that? No, that's what do we need to get you through it and and get it to where you feel comfortable that you're operating within the, the letter of the law. So, you know, not not here to judge on where you got it or uh, how you got it or how you got here or anything else. Uh, you know, we're, we're going to do what we can to help you. To be fair, it depends what kind of mood he's in. So, um, yeah, don't don't call on a Monday. Just kidding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Uh, I don't give lectures very often. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Keaton's asking, um, FISDO, um, so your local FA um, office, you don't have to work, you know, directly with them, contact them anymore, correct? Nope. Great. It used to be that was one of the first steps because that took the longest now that they wiped out the, the need for the visit. No, no more local intervention. Everything done on the 135 is done through the Washington, D.C. email chain. Yeah, you bet. Um, all right, looks like... They still, uh, they, they still have oversight over you. Your local FISDO can still come out anytime and inspect. Yeah. We don't see it happening, but they could. Yeah. My uh, Looks like my, my neighbor's on this call up here. Um, what do I need to do to... Uh, register a used drone um what paperwork did you, did you make him a deal <laughs> <laughs> no no i i i uh this this was out outside the network actually uh yeah used drones registering a used drone with in number if it does if it had it might have an in number already and then if it does not have an in number perfect question you know the first question you asked with the used drone was was it registered you find out whether that was drone zone registration or FA registration. If you're not sure, uh, Ryan's going to post the link to the FA registry site and you can search by serial number. You can search by in number. You can search by uh, manufacturer state. There's a whole lot of ways to search. Uh, if you find out that it wasn't registered, then you, you're just going to need to register it like it was never registered because it wasn't. Uh, if which is our normal registration process. If it was registered, it's an easier system of two documents, uh, more numbers for you, an 8050-1 form and an 8050-2 form. The 8050-2 is the bill of sale. So the seller signs the 8050-2 signing the drone and the in number off over to the new owner. The new owner registers it with an 8050-1 form, uh, same as if it was never registered from that form. So pretty easy process. Uh, call me. I can help you through it. Cool. Um, Cost $5. About, you bet. I think we've got a agronomy question here. The benefits of operating at night, what would you be doing at night? Um, well, that's more of an agronomy question. What What's what's beneficial to spray at night? And there are things that are beneficial to spray at night. Leaves do open up, winds calm down. Uh, it's cooler at night. So, um, I won't go less, into details. less chance of other air traffic. That's there's a lot of benefits to operating at night, right. but uh, probably the only big downfall of operating at night is inversions, meaning the chemical doesn't want to drop to the ground as easy. Yeah, exactly. I'm not promoting we, operating we've got at big night. fans that blow it down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Parker's asking uh, Does each uh, remote pilot uh, need all licenses are these only needed for business? I think we, we already answered this one uh, above. Yes, yeah, so we'll skip that one. Um, would a business still need a swarming waiver for just two drones? Um, yeah, if if you're operating two drones with one pilot, that's swarming. Um, if you have two drones for two pilots, that's not swarming. Okay, Jeremy's asking, when buying a used T-40, should you put the serial number or remote ID in the affidavit. Um, okay. Remote ID or serial number, Charlie? They they want the remote ID now. Uh, they will accept if you look at the what's out there, there's a lot of people registering with the serial number. There's people that are registering with the box serial number. The FA will accept any serial number. They don't know what's correct and what's not correct. But the guidance that's written in the FAA world is 
register with remote ID. If it's a DJI project product, it's going to start with the letters and the numbers 1581 Foxtrot. It's 20 digits long. Uh, that's the one you find. If you look on the controller, it's your FC serial number, flight controller serial number. If you go to the AGMS site and look under aircraft management, it's the flight controller serial number, but you're looking for a 20 digit code that's 1581 Foxtrot. Uh, and that's what you want to use on all your paperwork for registration. Charlie, you started to say Foxtrot, and I thought you were going to slip up and say something else, and you were going to break your rule on this on this webinar. He's <laughs> dying to get me to cuss. Uh, okay. Uh, all right. Nicholas is asking, um, okay, how much do we charge to help with, the, with 137? Uh, FA regulations package that Charlie does is twenty five hundred dollars for one thirty seven four point oh seven and all of the questions that you can think of. Um, do we help with one oh seven two? One there are so many guides out there for one oh seven. You can buy a, a book off of Amazon. You can go to FA's uh, one oh seven website um, and they've got they've got practice tests and guides and everything on there. So. There are so many online guides that you're better served there, uh, in our opinion. Um, take the practice tests and you'll pass it. Um, and maintaining yearly compliance records. Um, so compliance records are, uh, there. there's some personal ownership here, I believe, Charlie, is what how we might uh, say this. Um, but as far as renewals, um, that's something that you can help with too, I'm assuming. On the just the personal records things, uh, the exemption is pretty clear on what's required for record keeping. Your state pesticide license is pretty uh, clear on what your record keeping is. Your, there's monthly reports that are required by your exemption. If you're doing your monthly reports, uh, if your state pesticide department calls and wants your last 12 months and you've been doing your FA monthly reports, it's pretty easy to give them 12 months worth of records. Uh, so it, it's kind of one of those things that if you're not doing any reporting and somebody asks for it, it's going to be hard to produce it. So start early and and do your reports uh, and you'll always have what everybody needs at any given time. Uh, as far as recurrent type information, your pilot's license needs to be renewed uh, via an online uh, compliance test or completion certificate once every two years. Your pesticide license is going to expire. Uh, is it two years or I don't I don't know. And it's on the state. Uh, yeah, your uh, medical, you know, your exemption is going to expire. Your registration is good for seven years. Again, it's like having a fleet of cars. Everything's got different expiration dates. Find a way to uh, to track that and be responsible. You know, I kind of say it all the time. This is a business, and and to operate this drone, you need a commercial license. Uh, it, that makes you a professional pilot. And sometimes you have to do those kind of things to, to step up and be that at that level. So that's, you know, it's, there's going to be a little bit of work and some of it's not fun. <laughs> you bet. All right. Um, Corey's asking if I crash and destroy my drone and get a new drone, um, with the registrations or exemptions transfer over. And I'll answer this one here. Um, it, the 137 and 4407, 44807 does not follow the drone. That's that's for all drones that you're operating. It doesn't matter what, what drone you're operating. Um, you do ever need to have an in number on that new drone. So you need to transfer the in number to that new drone. Okay. And I, I think there was another question earlier about transferring a 137 certificate uh, or an exemption. And you can change the name of an exemption or a 137, but that's a company name change. The FAA does not like people that try to sell a certificate, meaning you want to quit flying and you're going to sell your 137 certificate to somebody else. So it's really not a name, address, and person change. They they frown upon it. Uh, so really, it's not transferable. It's it's modifiable to, to change with a company, but if you're selling the company... Uh, and the company stays the same, it's still an entity there. But if you sell it and it wants to become somebody else's certificate, then you start over. Yeah, thanks for clarification. Okay, we're gonna jump over to the uh, to the chat side of the house right now. Um, 
and answer a few of those questions. There's looks like a pile of them as well. Okay. They start about 726 on the time on the chat. That's a big yeah. one. And then kind of a couple of answer ones here and there, but a couple pretty easy to answer ones, I'd say. Yeah, sounds good. Well, I'm, I'm at the bottom now, so I'll, we'll kind of try to rapid fire some of these if, if we can. Um, okay, someone's asking, will AgriSpray do a reg regulations package for an XAG drone? Yes, correct? Yes, doesn't matter what drone As long as got. it's on the list of approved drones. Yeah, we can help you through the process, any drone. Um, John's asking if there's organizations lobbying um, the FAA, working with the FAA um, with, to try to make this process easier. And I think, you know, Charlie and I were sitting on a meeting um, and uh, last week with a group of, of folks. Um, so there, there is, um, there is coordination within the industry, um, working with the FAA to make these processes better. So yes, I would say yes. Um, Jason D was asking about uh, limitations like kidney stones. Kidney stones is can be a disqualifier. Uh, reach out to your your to an aviation medical doctor and and ask for more information. You can get a medical if you don't have any recent history or you've been to a uh urologist recently that proves that you're kidney stone free uh but there's a lot of resources out there and for those of you who have any medical questions aviationmedicine.com is a consulting fee a consulting service and that's what they do is help people get medicals uh it's usually a 75 dollar phone consultation but they can answer you know somebody who's got major heart problems or something like that 75 dollars is pretty pretty helpful to find out what it's going to take to get a medical, but aviationmedicine.com uh, is a great resource. You bet. Um, all right. And operating at night, Charlie, you may have mentioned something about flying a 55 pound or less under, under 55 pound drone at night. You can do that legally under 107, correct? Um, correct. All right. Can you, can you spray at night with that less 55 pound drone? Yes. Yes, so long as it's the under, the, the under fifty five pound drone. Yes, so long as that's approved by the label on the whatever you are spraying. But yes, you can. Um, and then, kind of similar to that, if you are not spraying um, an economic poison, but instead spraying something like paint, do you need a one thirty seven? It's going to get down to a lawyer on determining what the definition of an economic poison is. Would you drink the paint? Uh, the Taylor laughs because he's probably been in different conversations where they're even trying to determine whether water is legal or not. Uh, too much water will kill a plant and not enough water will kill a plant. So but if you're spraying uh, water not on plants, but instead of parking lot. Then, the, but because they've they've defined it as will it will it improve plant growth or will it, it uh, kill plants? Then it then it's an economic poison. Paint will probably do that. So I would say by definition, paint probably is an economic poison. Uh, again, the the one thirty seven process is an email and a one page form after you get your exemption. There's really not a reason to have an exemption and not have a 137. So uh, the easy answer is get a 137 and you don't have to worry about what the definition of an economic poison is. But I would say that it's if if somebody complains about you spraying paint, the feds are going to say, where's your 137? There you go. Real fast, going yeah. along with that, uh, one has popped up. Can you spread seed prior to receiving your 137? The, your exemption states that you can practice with water. Uh, so I, I'm not, I'm going to tiptoe around that one. Taylor will probably have a better answer on how he perceives this one because your exemption does state that you can practice with water to become proficient to get your 137. But again, your 137 is a one page application and it takes three to five business days to get, uh, so I would say just get the 137. Uh, but yes. technically, a seed, te technically a seed is is not going to get you in trouble, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think so either. But but 
you still have to have your 4.07 as well, um, which is right. going to take, yeah. So patience, just have a little bit of patience. Uh, it goes a long way. And ultimately, all right, can you can you spray dicamba out of a drone and, you know, on your soybeans? Well, the drone will do it and nobody will know until something bad happens. And that's what this is all about, right? You know, you can do anything you want. You know, you can, you can speed. Most of you probably... You know, went five or ten over the speed limit if you drove your car today. Uh, nobody cares until something bad happens, right? So that's what this is all about. You know, you just have to make sure that you you operate legally whenever something bad happens, um, so you can cover your butt. And so you a you know what how to operate legally and how to be safe, so nothing bad does happen. When it does, um, you are covered. So that's what it boils down to here, really. Um, I'm, and that's not an endorsement to spray dicamba with a drone. Please do not do that. Please and thank you. <laughs> Please, especially from a tech standpoint. We yeah. don't well, want to touch you, you that can stuff. actually you can spray dicamba out of a drone as long as you're doing uh, as long as it's labeled for and you're doing pasture or brush work. So <laughs> just know your labels. Yeah. All right. Uh, is there an age limit for a visual observer, a VO on site, Charlie? No, unless your manual is written that there would be, and I can't see of a reason why it is. The only requirements for the VO are what's written in your ops manual, operations manual, uh, and no. So my 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 six year old son wants to be my VO. Is that okay? Did you train him? Does he does he meet the requirements of your training manual and your operations manual? And can perform the duties that he's been tasked with, then he, you'll be he'll be fine. Uh, right. There's probably some six year olds that are more suited for it than some of the people that are distracted and doing other things. <laughs> so yeah, I, I don't have a problem with that if he meets the requirement. Uh, <laughs> Dad, what's that thing doing? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. Um, all right, somebody's asking, can I get my third class medical before my 107? Yes, you can get your third class medical at any point in time. Is that right, Charlie? That's correct. There's no requirement to have anything when you go walk in and get a medical. Yeah. You don't even have to tell the doctor what you want to do with it. You just want a third class medical. Yeah. Um, a local person here is asking, uh, preferred medical examiner near Columbia, Missouri. There's... A couple that are listed locally, uh, there's one that I know won't even schedule an appointment. Uh, so I really don't is, have a is this local... Is this a call Charlie thing? Yeah, I would say this is a call me because I'm going to, okay. I'm probably going to refer you to the closest guy out by Warrensburg. But I, I think there is a doctor that I've heard recently that's now doing them in town. But uh, there's, you know, so many people from all across the country on this call. I hate to just point out our hometown. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, Ryan, any any that are are crucial to be answered tonight um, that you you've seen? You've answered pretty much the ones I was looking at. Um, I didn't read through that. A, a, a takeaway that I could probably give to everybody as you go through this process is read the regulations, read your manuals, read your exemptions. Uh, don't just grab it and throw it on the shelf. If you're ever inspected by a government person, whether it's pesticide or FAA, they're going to go back to your manuals and say, show me where you've been trained. Show me where, how close can, you, you've got somebody standing with you that's a spectator. How close can he be to your operation? You know, there's, let me see your, your license and your medical, uh, it seems simple to think that you're always going to carry your license in your medical when you're flying your drone. Uh, I can tell you from experience, it must not be as easy as I think, because most of the people that I ask, Hey, you got your license on you? No, it's back in the back of the house or I left it at the shop or you're, you're required to be able to produce license and medical operations, manual exemption registration to the administrator at any time he asks. So uh, he doesn't really want you to be able to do it electronically. He wants to see it. Uh, but if nothing else, have it available electronically. <laughs> uh, 
know it, know what's on it, know when it, know when it expires. <laughs> uh, it's simple things. You know, if somebody comes up and says, when does your exemption expire? If you don't know, that probably means you never got to the last part that shows when the expiration date is. Uh, it seems simple when you say it that way, but most people don't know it. Yeah. They can go, it seems like it's been about two years since I got it. That must mean it's due. Uh, yeah. Simple things. You bet. And when in doubt, call Charlie. Call me. Call yeah. me. I I got one today. Can you let me know when my, my exemption expires? I think it's coming up. It was May of next year. But I applaud the guy for asking. And the only reason that it wasn't this year was because he was from back in the old days when he had a T30 exemption. He converted it to a T40 exemption, which changed his expiration date. But he was remembering when he first got his T30. So uh, kudos to him for thinking it was expiring. And all I told him was, here's your new date. Please set a reminder on this date to let me know, and I'll help you get it renewed. <laughs> so uh, it uh, it's good to know that people are out there looking at those kind of things. So you got it. Great, I'm going Charlie. Fast. We are. What was that, Ryan? I'm going real fast. One I'm actually asked quite a bit at uh, shows, or just in general. Uh, at the bottom, very bottom of chat here, uh, Nick was asking, "Can I get a 107, 137, and the Ford for 807?" And pesticide before I even purchase a drone. Uh, real no. quick, everything except for finalizing the 137, correct, Charlie? Yes. So you can't you can get everything there except for finalizing your 137. The yeah. only thing that's predicated on something else is uh the 137. So pesticide, everything is just standalone. Exemption standalone, registration standalone, pilot's license, medical, everything can be done on its own. The combination is exemption, registration, and 107 to get a 137. So the first point that it asks for uh, a registered drone is at the applying for the 137. Yeah. So, and you know, I know this. This is at this point in time right now um, as we're recording this. Um, this is coming up on, on spray season. We'll have guys starting to spray here in April and May, um, then really heavy in June and July. Um, and so we have, there's, you know, T40 drones, you know, more coming in here, uh, this end of this month and in April, and then we'll have, you know, more drones coming in, in, in uh, May and June. And so we, the in number piece of the puzzle right there, that is what holds you up on the 137 and we have a program in place to actually get an in number on these drones before you get them and that's what we're going to be working very very hard uh, to make sure that happens so that we don't slow you down um so yes we can um we can get you through that process about 90 percent uh and then once we have the in number on the drone that's that that's the last 10 percent. so yes you can start the process now and i I would recommend that you do start your process now, even if you don't have a drone in hand. And if you follow our process, even when you're doing your own paperwork, I mean, I've, I've got a process right now that is when it works is 10 days for drone registration. We we just registered a fly cart. So I'm pulling a, pulling a pin on a grenade here. We just registered a, a DJI fly cart in 10 days. There's only one fly cart in America that has an in number on it and it's ours. And it, I have a temporary registration in hand in 10 days. Uh, so that's not even an established product. That's establishing a new registration line. And we got confirmation back in 10 days. Uh, we got to make sure that the paperwork's right and everything goes through. But we, we I put it in the mail before we left for the, for the spray users conference and got the email while while I was driving home that it was done. So it was 10 days for the turn on that one. So, uh, and it's the same file letter that I give to you all when you register your drone that we request that it be processed immediately and that uh, temporary be given to us. So like you said, that's if we if we work on the process, we can speed it up to, to try to make season, but we don't want to get late. You bet. All right, guys. Why? Well, I hope this has been very informative. I hope you learned something. 
Um, if nothing else, if you have questions, call Charlie. That's the key takeaway here. Um, and we will get you through this process. We are here to help you. We are here to empower rural America as, as our mission statement is. And this is one of the pieces of the puzzles to doing that. So thank you for joining us here tonight for another edition of AgriSpray Q&A. I hope you guys have a great evening. See you.